essentially, um, so as Agueda has said, I, I currently uh, work at NASA. I'm an astrodynamic specialist, and I'll try and explain uh, in the next few slides what that means, because maybe some people are not uh, <laughs> familiar with those terms, right? And what I wanted to talk uh, today a little bit is uh, personal experience on, on science education. And yeah, let's see. <laughs> So on how to become an astronaut in a way. I don't know if anyone in the floor here has ever dreamt about becoming an astronaut. I personally did when I was a kid. I think I had many dreams. I, I wanted to do many things, but they were always STEM related. And astronauts, I don't know, I think space has something uh, that makes us all dream, right? The, the fact that there's so many questions to answer, so many things that we want to learn about space. And becoming an astronaut seems like the natural way to explore space in its fullest uh, capacity, right? And also the cool things that you could do when you would be floating around in space. So uh, yeah, essentially, who doesn't want to become an astronaut, right? And also, I think astronauts, whenever I'm always asked, like, what, what, what career path do you need to become an astronaut? There's actually no career path, because astronauts do everything. Any type of STEM, uh, uh, say, field is within uh, an astronaut's day work, right? Astronauts actually have to be good at everything. They actually are trained to do uh, biology uh, tests. They have to be uh, engineers because they need to fix things on the International Space Station. Uh, they need to know about orbital mechanics because they need to fly things around. So they need to know a little bit of everything. So for me, it's like uh, the perfect scientist because they have uh, knowledge about a little bit of everything. Okay. So I just wanted to start a little bit how talking about me when when I was a kid and what were my role models as a kid, right? And what got me inspired on on following STEM or mathematics uh, in my case. And I would say that personally, that the person that put the first seed, I think, was my father. He's also a scientist. He's a, a, a chemist. And I do remember when we were growing up, he would always explain us, uh, I don't know how, the eclipses went, why some certain chemical reactions were going, or a little bit of science. He was always teaching us small things, and I think that hit on me, and I wanted to learn or see the world through science, right? And I don't know, we all have this TV show that we've always watched. In my case, I'm from the 80s, and I do remember, and I loved uh, Big Man's World. I don't know if anyone here has ever seen it, but I don't know, they were goofy. They always explained different science concepts in a very fun and illustrative way. And for me, uh, it was a great way to understand science and, and get involved in that. Uh, then I also have a vivid memory, and maybe that's why I wanted to become an astronaut of this book, uh, Charlie Brown. I, I had the Spanish edition. <laughs> uh, and it, it was just a, a book that they just explained different things uh, about science. And I just do remember just going around. And I must say that I usually mainly checked out the book, the pages where they were talking about space. Uh, <laughs> and then last but not least, I think uh, I do remember very vividly an image. I remember one day my father took me to a friend's house and we were watching the stars. He had a telescope. It was the first time I was watching through a telescope and I got to see Saturn and a couple of more things. And I think that just changed my view of, of the world. And I really thought like, oh, I, I need to get to know more about space and things like that. Uh, but what do I do currently, right? Uh, after getting my PhD and, and everything, I'm currently working at NASA at the Goddard Space Flight Center, and I'm an astrodynamic specialist. And essentially what we do as astrodynamicists is we compute trajectories in space. So the idea is when you want to put a spacecraft um, or you want to go to Mars or you want to go visit the International Space Station, you need to find which is the best way to get there, uh, what type of maneuver you have to do. So we're doing a lot of cool math, uh, trying to uh, find out what is the best way to go from point A to point B. Uh, I'm currently working on, on two missions, the Roman Space Telescope and the uh, Space Weather Follow-On. Uh, they are telescopes that will go around close to where James Webb is that was launched last year and just will do amazing science for the scientists. And the question would be like, OK, what, be, what happened with that? dream about becoming an astronaut, right? What, what happened to that dream of that little girl that when was 10 was dreaming about going to space and just floating around, right? Uh, well, it's there still always, uh, but recently it's sort of becoming a reality, right? Uh, I think it was a year and a half ago, more or less, I got a call from a friend, uh, Mariona, and she 
talking about like, would you be willing to come on an analog mission? And I think that uh, without even thinking, I said yes. <laughs> and in April 2023, I will be participating in this Epatia or Epatia uh, mission. Uh, it's an analog mission. That means that we will be going to the uh, and Mars Desert Research Center, it's in Utah, and performing uh, a simulation of what a, a mission at Mars would be, right? And Ibisha is not only, is we intend not only to be a, an analog mission, but we also want to use this platform to promote space exploration and enhance uh, the scientific vocations among uh, the young generations. So let me speak a little bit about why the importance about uh, analog missions, right? Um, we currently just saw, I think, if you're aware about space things, uh, that this week uh, Artemis 1 was launched and we're now stepping our, uh, going back to the moon and trying and, and have a more sustainable presence over there, right? And it's inevitable that in, in the next 10, 20, 50 years, I don't know, have to put a, a time frame, we will be going uh, to Mars in, in some way. We've already sent a lot of probes there. We have robots that are examining the surface. And it, it's one of these days we will be either visiting in a just for science or we will be trying to uh, make a sustainable base in Mars, right? Uh, but there are a lot of challenges on the way. So one of the ways to start studying this type of thing is doing analog missions. And the idea is within the limitations that Earth uh, has, right? Uh, we have air, uh, we have the communications, uh, we have the same gravity, so our conditions are not as extreme as if we would be uh, in Mars, but we can uh, simulate as uh, realistically as possible those things. And that helps us uh, to understand also what are the challenges, right? There's the part of isolation, the limitation of food, uh, communication uh, limitations, all those things that we can do uh, to be training a lot. And that's the importance about analog missions. Uh, so as I said, uh, so in April, 2023, if you wanna check out, we will be uh, performing our, during two weeks, we will be uh, performing our analog mission. And the name of, of the mission, uh, Ipecia, it's inspired on the, because uh, it's inspired on the first known uh, female scientist, right? Ipecia of, Alexandria, uh, probably not the first woman scientist, but it is the first that we have a uh, record of. Our crew is female-led, is multidisciplinary, intergenerational, and, and I will show you the, the woman behind the mission uh, in the next few slides. And our goals are mainly three. The first one is to perform uh, research, high quality research uh, to promote Mars exploration. Uh, we also want to conduct uh, a lot of outreach activities and science communication, and we want to use our platform to inspire and promote role models uh, among the STEM uh, uh, fields. So our crew is all female, right? Uh, and I'll just introduce you a little bit, this uh, amazing women. Uh, Mariona is our crew uh, commander. Uh, she already has conducted a, a previous uh, MDRS mission, analog mission in 2019. And, and she's the one I uh, joined with Carla, uh, our uh, second in command who recruited all of us and gave me the call to ask if I wanted to become a, an analog astronaut, right, myself. Uh, and then we also have Laia Ribas, uh, she's a, a biologist and she is, uh, let me read that, <laughs> she's an, an ICREA researcher, no, uh, I'm missing her. She's a biologist and she's a PI at the Institute of Ciencias del Mar in Barcelona. She does a, a outstanding research with zebrafish. Uh, we also have Nuria Jar, she's a freelance journalist and she's specialized in health and science communication. And she won recently a, an award for a podcast on the scientists, scientificas de, del coronavirus, so women scientists uh, during COVID times. Uh, Neusa Bate, she's an ICREA uh, uh, PI. She is an engineer and she has uh, a couple of companies and uh, among many things that she does, she does uh, reusable uh, batteries uh, done from organic materials. So uh, yep. then we have Seska Kufi, she's uh, an engineer at Airbus. Uh, and then we have 
the last two that our backup crew members, Anabak and Elena Arias, because any mission has to have some backup uh, astronauts, right, in case, because we're going in April and it's still a long way. So if something uh, went wrong with some of us that we could not make it to the base, they will be taking our place. And then uh, we have other uh, people or women that are helping us with our different goals, right? Not, not only on this part of space exploration, but because we've been doing outreach activities and so on, we have uh, a couple of uh, educators that are helping us with our uh, efforts in, in that line. We also have a, another artist and writer that are helping us with writing stories uh, and, and spread the word. And we also have our legal advice, uh, thanks to Cristina Lázaro. Because right now we are also an association, so we can explore more all, all these things. And I don't know if you found anything weird on this crew, but uh, we are all women and that's intentional. And, and the idea is because we want to uh, set it an example and, and we want to promote uh, role models in STEM, right? And especially in the space sector, the numbers are very low. Uh, there's very few women that uh, enter the space force. And we hope that by using our platform and by uh, promoting uh, and, and showing ourselves, uh, we can help inspire young girls that will then get uh, interested in space and, and STEM education and make these numbers change. Uh, so among the different activities that we will be uh, performing, we're doing astronomy research uh, with Mariana and myself. We're doing a lot of engineering projects and I could go on and on talking about them, but I think that's not the goal uh, of, of the talk, right? Uh, but we are doing, we will be doing performing different uh, projects uh, during our stay on these three different fields. Another part is the outreach and communication uh, that is probably most relevant for all of you, right? So. Last, let me just drink a little bit of water. Um, so essentially, last spring, uh, we performed uh, in collaboration with Abacus Co-op. Uh, it's a co-op in, in Catalonia, the region where we are from. Uh, we we made uh, we created an online course for future astronauts. This course was uh, intended for only uh, 500 people. Uh, 350 kids, uh, but we're working on making it available to different uh, public schools so that more people can 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 take advantage of, of this course, right? Uh, this course was targeted for three specific uh, age groups. It was for uh, kids between 6 and 8, 8, 10, and 12, uh, 10, 12, because uh, all of them have different ways of learning and they're on different stages uh, of growth and U.S. educators know that better than, than I do, right? So, uh, the main topic was the same, but the activities were adapted for the different uh, age groups. And we had special interest on uh, the group between six and eight, because uh, we know that there's some studies that show that they're, where they shape their minds or where they start getting uh, more inspired on space or uh, STEM or the literature, arts or whatever is during that uh, stages uh, of their life. right? We did put a special interest in girls, and that's essentially just uh, if you just show more uh, female role models that will inspire the, the girls to get in, interested in, in that. Um, so the first edition was uh, a success, and I just wanted to talk uh, a little bit on how we designed this course uh, and give an idea of, of what we did with, with that. So essentially, uh, it was an online course, as, as I said, and it was in collaboration with Abacus, and the students would log in uh, every day uh, during, I think it was during five weeks. Uh, and we separated the course in, in five different uh, parts. And it was a way to show like how astronauts have to know a little bit of everything, right? How uh, space exploration can be uh, achieved through different uh, parts of science. And also highlighting the different expertise that the different crew members has uh, in here. So. The first week, uh, it was on astronomy. Uh, then we had another course on engineering. We had one on health, another small course on biology, and then on arts and communications. Because one of it is also important for all of us as a scientist to communicate what you, we are doing uh, and, and get uh, the public to understand 
how cool science is. So essentially, uh, I mean, it was only one week, so we were uh, we just targeted specific problems in in the different fields, like in astronomy. What what we touched is we were trying to explain how big is the solar system, how do we compute distances in space, how what are exoplanets, and so just get them inspired of what our solar system and the universe is. And the engineering part, the students were asked to think about water, uh, how to reuse water in space, and how to have that into account. Water is very important when we're going in space, right? So just to think about how uh, privileged we are here in Earth to have water every day, and uh, what we would do if we had to carry water when we're in space. In the health part, um, what are healthy habits, uh, how to design a meal, what does eating in space, exercising in space uh, entitled, and we just help them, uh, we ask them to develop a, a meal for astronauts uh, and, and just get, get interested in cooking and things like that. Uh, we also had a biology module and over there they learned how to grow plants, uh, how, what, what, they learned a little, little bit of, uh, of genetics, that's not my field of expertise, <laughs> and a little bit how, how to use uh, those uh, knowledge to create uh, more resilient plants, or how would they uh, think about when we are at Mars, can we grow plants at Mars, how would we do it, how we would create a habitat in Mars that would enable us to grow uh, crops. And then finally, there was a communication uh, activity, I think that was a very important and very inspiring uh, module. They, they learned how to importance of science communication, uh, they had to prepare a small poster and show that to the rest of, of the members in, in the school, right? And they could pick whatever one they was. And to be honest, when we saw the results that they, they had, we were astonished. It was amazing to see how much they had learned and how much uh, they were willing to share with all of us uh, their experiences. Uh, so a little bit of how we um, uh, envisioned th this course, right? It's always hard when you have to prepare a course uh, and, and you have to give it to so many kids. Uh, what are the platforms? How are you going to do it, right? Uh, that is something that always comes in, into everyone's mind. Uh, we decided this format, and I think it, it worked very well. Uh, essentially, uh, every week, uh, the kids would have access to a, a 10 minute video, I think it was around 10 minutes, where two different crew uh, members would explain uh, and give a, a small master uh, talk, right, about, about the subject uh, in presence. So the kids would have the opportunity during 10 minutes to listen a little bit about space or whatever the module was about. So they would learn, in my case, I was in part of, of the astronomy one, so we would explain them a little bit, like what's in space, what are the planets, what are the distances, and things like that. And then we introduced briefly what was their challenge uh, for the week. That week, every student had a challenge, and the challenges were adapted uh, for the different age groups, right? So depending on the age group, you would have a harder challenge than, than the others. So they would just receive uh, paper where they were explanations on what they had to do, what they had to achieve. And throughout the week, they could revisit the video and they had to work on their challenge. And at the end of the week, they, they had the online platform where they would upload the different results of what they did. And here on, on the slides, you can see uh, in the astronomy part, we asked them to make an, a scale uh, solar system, right? So they, they would have to measure the distances and put different planets one behind the other, uh, just to have an idea of the immensity of the, so our solar system. They also had to envision how they would imagine an exoplanet to be. So they were very creative. I honestly thought that everyone would just draw something and uh, seeing that how some of them got foam uh, balls and painted the planets and, and just used CDs to make the rings of whatever. It was pretty, pretty cool to see how their minds and how imaginative all the kids were. Uh, then finally, uh, each um, each course ended up with having a small uh, female, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, <laughs> note, right? So we would, in, in each of them, we would uh, highlight the, uh, a woman that had been successful in, in, in that uh, STEM career. So for instance, in the engineering, we had uh, 
Hamilton, the woman that wrote the first uh, code for the Apollo uh, mission. Uh, and then we also had a small story telling uh, about Pacer, or uh, our, we call it, I think, in Pacer 23, uh, what would a mission uh, to Mars uh, look like? And they would just have something to read about and think about uh, in space. So that was during the week, all the things that they would do. And then towards uh, the end uh, of the week on, uh, I think it was on a Sunday, uh, we would have a Zoom call with uh, the specialist of, of the week, right? So each week uh, on Sundays, they would meet with us online and throughout an hour, we would go over uh, their experiments, what they had done through the week, and we would also answer any questions that they would have. And uh, I must say that one hour felt short. After one hour, they, they still had a lot of questions to ask uh, and, and a lot of very interesting questions to to answer. Uh, every time I've been doing, uh, thanks to the Zipati project, a lot of STEM activities in, in schools, and I'm always amazed with the, you know, with the amount of questions and how uh, curious they are uh, when it comes to space and, and, and uh, science, right? And this was for five weeks. Uh, I think uh, the kids learned a lot and it was very interesting and amazing to see how they came up with all the solutions to all the problems that, that, that we put them through. And then this September, uh, as a closing uh, ceremony, uh, we there was a, a maker fest in, in Barcelona, and all the kids were invited to come and meet the the scientists. So some of us uh, were able to go there and share and talk with the kids in person, which also was nice because uh, in online interaction is uh, is good. <laughs> But when you get to meet someone in person, I think it makes a better impression because you really see that real person, right? Unfortunately, we could not all be present over there because uh, we're currently, some of us in different parts of the world, right? So uh, only the, the the crew members that were in Barcelona were able to participate. Uh, and for what I know, it was a, a great experience to get to meet the kids and, and exchange with them. And they were all uh, very excited about that. And that's a little bit what I wanted to talk about this course about astronauts and how we have been using this to uh, promote space uh, and uh, science exploration. I do think just to finish that one of the things that I've learned throughout the years uh, of being in in uh, in science, right, is that sometimes we get uh, very uh, focused on being very good at one thing and, and we get very specialized on only one thing. But I think uh, in science, we need to be able to talk to other uh, uh, science disciplines. We need to teach the kids that it's not, uh, you don't have to be specialized in one thing or you do not have to know a lot about one thing. You need to be able to learn and know a little bit of all the different space, uh, sorry, science and STEM activities because it makes everything more sense and having uh, an open, more open mind. And yeah, that's a little bit of what I wanted to talk. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ariana. It, it's actually true, isn't it? That uh, it's not only about different skills, but different knowledge to be able to communicate and understand each other, and and to be yeah. able to understand what they're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's something that since I started working here at NASA, I've learned even more. Because when I was back doing my PhD, I only talked with mathematicians, right? So we all spoke the same language. Uh, but here, when when I'm doing the different missions, you need to talk to the scientists, you need to talk to the people from ACS, you, you talk with different disciplines, and we all speak different languages, and just getting to understand each other sometimes is very, very challenging. Exactly. Now, now we're, we're running a poll uh, at the same time where we're asking them what kind of sci scientific services are most appreciated by the teachers. And one of them is, uh, they're saying at the moment, is these uh, MOOCs, the professional development training courses that we're running. I was thinking that, what, that your program, we might look into collaborating and converting into something that teachers across Europe and the world can use themselves. So you don't have to actually organize everything, but they can teach it in their classes themselves. And they can run these mini versions of your training as well. So yeah, that's something we can look into. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I think from, from our side, we are currently working how we can uh, put that to give that uh, as resources for teachers in, in, in schools in, in Catalonia, just because we're based there. But if anyone around Europe can work on that, that would be just amazing. Yeah. That, that is very cool because the other th the other item of service of scientists that the that the participants are saying is very good is actually the repository of resources. Uh, it's all about collaboration, and uh, you were mentioning now that you had to talk to other um, 
people from other disciplines, and you're talking about this crew that's going to go and do the simulations and in the future go to yeah. Mars. But it's not only about the astronauts, isn't it? I mean, you are supported by a large number of uh, scientists that are on the ground, that they're okay, they're not going to ever travel, but without whom you would not be able to travel. So is that the path for those of us that get dizzy and cannot? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to follow, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, whenever you go in space, uh, there's also a lot of people in the ground that that support and that help you. And and I, I think it's a way also to being involved. If you're scared about going to space and, and you don't want to be there because it's like, okay, it's a little bit overwhelming, but I want to be on the ground. And we always need assistance with the people on the ground. I think actually when you're doing science experiments, you need the help from people on ground that will tell you and guide you with the science that, that is being performed over there. So yeah, yeah. If you they all have STEM as well, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, you can, yeah. so you can communicate with them as well. Exactly. And, and you were saying that uh, you've always wanted to be an astronaut. Do yes. you have a plan B? Yeah. I. I I think we always have to have a plan B. We, uh, I, I think me personally, I just went with the flow. It was there being an astronaut, but also I was realistic. Uh, there's very few openings uh, for becoming an astronaut. It's just like now recently space is becoming a, a big thing, right? But back 10, 15 years ago, uh, calls for astronauts happen every 10 years. So it's very, yeah, I think you could not put all <laughs> your 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 coins on, on just becoming an astronaut so yeah but i did want to be involved in space and i think i've achieved that so yeah in a way That's very big congratulations and, and it's what we were saying so it's a, becoming an astronaut and it's more than that you're doing the research you're doing the outreach i mean you're getting up at 5 a.m to be able to <laughs> talk to teachers yeah. across europe and we need that we need scientists and researchers that go beyond their labs or their rooms or their Space, yeah, uh, shuttles to talk to people. Yeah, yeah, I I totally agree. And and for me, uh, it is always very inspiring when I when I'm asked to go because I have a lot of friends that are educators and they always ask me to go to their schools and talk to the kids. And I find it I really have a lot of fun when I'm there talking with them because it it always amazes me when they are so young how many questions they have how how many ways they've thought about uh, solving those problems and their crazy ideas. And I always tell them, just keep thinking out of the box because that's the best way to, to get uh, advances in science. So yeah. Definitely. 